Over the last five years, LNG has really developed into a maritime fuel. This has been largely pushed by certain subsidies that have been passed into shipping. However, since 2011, when the Bit Viking was converted, the industry has seemed to have seen LNG fuel as a more serious and become more confident about the usage of it. Today, we're seeing vessels being ordered in North America, largely pushed by the uh, shale gas revolution. So we've got container ships now on order, which are going to operate between uh, Jacksonville and Puerto Rico within the Jones Act trades. In Europe, it seems to be ferries and offshore vessels that seem to be taking up this trade. Now, one of the major pushes for this are the emission regulations, which are coming in in certain emission control areas that are set up around the world. Um, this will see that the sulphur content in the emissions pushed from 1% uh, down to 0.1%. So, by converting across to LNG, the, do not, the owners do not have to worry about the, the emission content. Conversion over to LNG could be a viable option. However, the reasons behind converting over to LNG would be driven by the, uh, the emission control regulations that are coming in. Now, at the moment, owners and operators have really two options if they do not want to take the compliant fuel. Now, the first option would be to go to scrubber technology, which effectively takes the, uh, the dirty emissions out of the exhaust gas uh, once the, uh, the fuel has been burnt. This, the other option would be to go across to LNG. Now, at the moment, what we are noticing in the industry is that scrubbers is, appears to be the preferred method, where we're seeing already about 100 vessels either converted or about to be converted to the system. LNG has been taken up by various owners. We're seeing a few ferries in North America, which are now planned to go across to LNG fuel, as well as um, a couple of uh, railroad container ships as well, which operate on the Jones Act trades. In Europe, again, yeah, ferries uh, seem to be uh, an option for conversion. However, very little else appears to be going over to the LNG option, mainly because of the costs involved in uh, repiping the engines on the vessels. For LNG to become a globally used fuel in the maritime sector, certain things will need to be done. Now we're starting to see the foundations of these and we're really in the um, early years at the moment of LNG being used as a maritime fuel. However, s things like bunker hubs will need to be set up around the world now we're starting to see these being developed in places like Singapore and Rotterdam and other ver various places around the world. Now also for this to, in to happen, we would need to see ship-to-ship -ship LNG bunker tankers being developed. Again, we're starting to see these with the new order recently for a vessel that will be stationed in Belgium. Uh, the other thing which could help LNG becoming a more seriously taken up fuel in the industry will be further subsidies being provided, such as the Norwegian NOx Fund did in the last 10 years in, for vessels operating on the Norwegian coast. If we can see that being taken up, then the industry will take this as a serious fuel. Now, we predict that by 2030, 8% of the total global demand of bunker fuel will be taken up by LNG. Now, if this doesn't happen, then there will be serious consequences on the oil industry because by that time, the amount of uh, emission control areas and the global spec which will be enforced by then, it's largely believed that, in fact, the refineries will not be able to take the capacity of distillate fuel that will be required to propel the, the world's fleet.